around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, but it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Except to hang his hat on. What are you talking about, Chester? I know better than to keep on playing, but I went right ahead and done it anyhow. Oh, the poker game last night, huh? Forget it. Forget it? Mr. Dillon, I lost $9.45 in that game. You'll live. Y- yes. Yes, I'll live, all right, but I'm sure going to be eating my low on the hog for the rest of this week. Wait a minute, Chester. What's the matter? Well, now, what's the matter with her? Flying down that boardwalk like the devil himself was chasing her. Yeah. Well, that's Sally Bogan, Miss June. Yeah, I know. Sally. Seems like she's scared of something right now. Hey, hey Sally. What? Wait a minute. Wait. Well, it's too out of day to be hurrying like that, yes. isn't it? Yes, it, uh, I, I guess it is. Oh, well, what's the trouble, Sally? Why were you running? Oh, I, I don't know. I... Something to scare you? Somebody I, I just saw. Man... Forget it, Marshal. I- I'm all right now. Well, who was he? What did he do to you? That, nothing. I just didn't want him to see me. Well, why? Who was he? My husband. Ben? No, not Ben. The other one. Forevermore the other one? The, the first one. Nobody knows about it. Not even Ben. What's this all about, Sally? Oh, I was 17 in San Francisco. He was second mate on a clipper. And about four years ago, it went down in a typhoon, and he... He's dead, Marshal. He's got to be dead, or else I'm not really married to Ben. You should have told Ben about it. I know, I know, but I didn't. And now it's too late. It wasn't him. It couldn't have been him. Just somebody that looked like him, maybe. Oh, that's possible. But if he wasn't drowned, he'd come back before this. It's been four years. Oh, my gracious, alive. No man wouldn't stay away from a pretty little... <laughs> been a long time, Sally. You're prettier than ever. Uh, hello, Jeff. Why'd you run when you saw me up the street there? Well, I wasn't sure. I... Oh, it can't be. Oh. It just can't be. Hey, no. Hey, what's the matter? No. Jeff, don't touch me. You better take it easy, mister. She's kind of upset. Well, who are you, mister? My name's Dylan. Well, you just run along, Dylan. He's the marshal here, Jeff. You don't need no permission from the law. Jeff. Sally Please, and don't... me are going to spend some time together and maybe have a drink or two. And it's going to be just like old times now that I'm back. No. No. You better tell him, Sally. Tell me what? Jeff, I'm married. <laughs> I ought to know better than anybody else that you're... You don't mean to somebody else. I thought you were dead. The ship was sunk and you didn't come back. And I thought you were dead. Well, you sure didn't waste no time hitching on to somebody else. She waited four years, mister. That's a long time for a girl to try to make out a loan, don't you think? What I think is my business, Marshal... Come on, Sally. We're going to talk this over in no, private. No, Jeff, I can't. Now, this is no way for a wife to act or a lawful husband. Come on. Just a minute. Now, 
Sally. Do you want to go with him? No. No. Marshal, I've got to tell Ben. I've got to decide what to do. All right, mister, you heard her. Are you aiming to come between a man and his wife? You call it what you like, but you're not dragging her off somewhere when she doesn't want to go. Is that so? Well, on board ship, Mr. Marshal, when a fella but... <laughs> All right, find some water to throw on it, Chester. Yes, sir, I will. I'll take Sally over to Doc's. Maybe he can give her something to calm her down. Boy, how do you like cold in a Texas January? Yeah, well, he may wish he'd stayed out when Ben Bogan learns about this. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Ooh, ow, ouch, ooh. What's wrong, Joe? Daphne, have you been using my razor again? Just a little. I was peeling peaches. Oh, fine. Why didn't you change the blade? It feels like you've been sharpening pencils with this thing. Now, just a minute, buddy. It was you who said we could use more economy around here. And I've been saving wherever I can. And by shaving the skin off the peaches... But look at my face. Think how the Red Cross could have used all this blood. It's your own fault. You and your economy. Well, being penny conscious isn't such a bad idea. Not if you use common sense. Take savings bonds, for instance. Uh Uh-uh. Here it comes. Go right ahead and scoff. But I got eight million Americans who agree with me. We all buy savings bonds on the payroll saving plan because we know that investing in bonds is the best way to use our money. We could use some of that money around here. Well, maybe, or maybe we just think we can. When we buy bonds, we guarantee we'll have the money in the future when we'll certainly need it more. Stop waving that razor. You're splattering me with soap. Well, I don't mean to get excited, but who wouldn't? Where else can a man make an investment that's guaranteed to pay off $4 for every three? And guaranteed by the credit of the whole U.S. of A. So there. Bravo! Bravo! All right, all right. Now let me change the blade and get back to shaving. I think I'll stay and watch. Why? Because you're so cute when you cut yourself. Oh, fine. nothing wrong with it. A good night's rest won't cure. And one less husband, of course. Yeah, that's quite a situation. Yeah, it sure is. It's going to be worse, I'm afraid. Why? She didn't break any law. She had plenty of reason to think her first husband was dead. No, I mean the trouble is going to stir up when Ben Bogan finds out. Mm, She doesn't want to see Ben until tomorrow, Matt. She wants to stay here in town tonight and try to figure things out. No, that's a good idea. She can get herself a room over at the Dodge house. Wonder which one of those men she'll pick. I don't know, Doc. I just hope she does it quick before the two of them meet head on. <laughs> you know, Matt, if I was 20 years younger, I might get into the fight myself. Yeah? <laughs> An old goat like you. Goat? <laughs> oh, Matt. I'll have you know a few short years back when I was a mite slicker and spryer. Oh, my. I was a holy terror with the ladies. Yeah, I can believe that. Why, it wasn't so recently that I'd even accept a woman patient. They'd always up and fall in love with me. <laughs> <laughs> and a man just can't have it. <laughs> Doc, what's this I hear about my wife? Oh, uh, hello, Ben. Uh, oh, Marshal. Somebody said they'd seen you bringing Sally up here a while ago. Well, uh... Yeah, I, I guess they might have at that. Well, what's the matter with well, There's it? nothing serious wrong with your wife, Bogan. She's a little upset, that's all. Well, what do you mean? What's she upset about? Well, well I don't think the technical terms would interest you. Now, well, never mind the terms, Doc. What's she doing here? What's wrong with well, her? Well, um... Yeah, well, maybe you could explain it better. What's going on here, Marshal? Well, Ben, it's, uh... Yeah... Yeah, it's kind of like Doc said. It's uh, just... Doc, a... I think I'd better go over to the Dodge house. Ben. Sally, now, what's this all about? Haven't you told him, Marshal? 
Uh, well, I thought I'd better leave that to you, Sally. Tell me what, so help me. If somebody now, don't say something... Just take it easy, Ben. Take it There's easy. There's something wrong with my wife. There ain't nobody will say nothing, and you say take it easy. Ben, uh, it seems that uh, Sally here was married once before. Married? Yeah. A man named Lightly, a sailor. Uh, Sally thought that he'd been drowned at sea years ago, but... Well, he turned up here in Dodge today. Uh, he came looking for her. Sally, why didn't you tell me? It was all over and done with. I, I didn't think it mattered. Oh, you didn't, huh? Well, you think it mattered if I whip you, son? Ben! Leave her alone, son. You stay out of this, Marshal. We'll run that skunk out of town if you want to do something useful before I get to him and kill him. Kill him won't solve anything, Ben. He's got as much right here as you have. Has he got a right to come sneaking around my wife? Could be she's his wife, Ben. As it turns out, he's still alive. Well, he won't be alive long. And it's your fault, you little duck. See? Oh. I said leave her alone. I'll leave her alone as soon as I beat a little sense into her. No! No, please! All right. <laughs> All right, Doc, he's all yours. I think that fellow sure was mad when he come to him, Mr. Jones. You just stomping around. Well, what happened to him? Uh, he stumbled into Matt's fist, Chester. Well, oh, gracious, Mr. Dillon, you sure are keeping busy today. <laughs> What are you going to do about it, Matt? Wish I knew, Kitty. You know, if those two get together, somebody's going to be killed. Yeah. And I can't keep them apart forever. No? Yeah, if it was a drunken trail driver with a six-gun in his hand, I could have handled it, maybe. But I don't know. These man and wife mix-ups are... Two men and a wife, Matt. Well, that's quite a situation. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, it's going to be worrisome. Well, I... Sort of figured Sally was heading for trouble. Not quite like this. No? What do you mean? Well, she doesn't belong in a place like Dodge City, Matt. She's too restless, too free and easy. She spends too much time in town. Doing what? I, I wouldn't have said anything if this hadn't come up. Well, now, come on, Kitty. What are you getting at? Um, do you know a whiskey drummer named Slim Randall? Slim Randall? Yeah, I've seen him around. Well, he and Sally have been together a lot the last few weeks. It's harmless enough, I guess. Well, you know how people talk and make something out of nothing. Yeah. All right, I'll change what I said. It's three times as bad. Or it will be if Ben hears about Slim Randall. Yeah, Matt? Oh, Matt. Yeah, what's the trouble? Yeah, I want you to... Mark, tell us. I want to know what you two are done with my wife. I've been trying to tell you that she doesn't want to see you tonight. She doesn't want to see anybody. She's got to be left alone so she can kind of get hold of herself. Well, there you are, Ben. You heard what he said. You're lying, both of you. You let her get together with that low-down sailor You're from San Francisco. Morgan. That's right, mister. Well, I've been looking for you. Well, now you found me. My name is Lightly. Well, you dirty teen. Yeah, well, right, hold it, Ben. No, no, Marshal, let him draw. That's all I ask, just let him draw. I'll shoot the first man who touches his gun. Mister, I want to know where my wife is. He doesn't know any more about it than you do, Lightly. If she wants you, she'll come looking She's for you. He's got her locked up somewhere, so she would have. You got no wife, mister. You're a dead man. And if you ain't yet, you're soon going to be. Oh, you like to name the time and the place, Bogan? How about tomorrow morning? In front of the livery stable. I was hoping you'd make it sooner. I'll make it right now if you... All right, hold it. Bogan, you... All right, Lightly, you've said your piece. Now get out. See you all tomorrow. Drinks are on me. I'll kill him. I swear I'll kill him. Oh, calm down, Ben. Go buy yourself a whiskey. 
Maybe I will. Well, it sure can cause a lot of trouble, Matt. A woman having one husband too many. Maybe she won't have, Doc. Not for long, anyway. to sit there, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, that's right, Chester. Well, it's pretty near time. Yeah, I know that. Oh. <sighs> oh, for heaven's sakes, relax, Chester. You got me just jumpy as a cat. Well, ain't you gonna do nothing to stop it, Mr. Dillon? Not much I can do about it, Chester. You can stop it? No, just postpone it. As long as they feel like they do, it's going to happen later today or tomorrow or sometime. I can't ride a herd on them 24 hours a day. Well, I don't know, but they must be something you could do. Well, how about a game of pinochle, Chester? A pinochle? At, at a time like this? Well, why not? Why, I never heard nothing so cool, buddy, in all my life. Pinochle? Well, I never thought of it that way. You know what I mean, Doc Adams. No, I don't want to play no pinochle. Um, well, how about you, man? Yeah, sure, Doc. Get the cards. Well, I swear I never seen the likes of you two. Oh, stop worrying, Chester. When it's time, I'm going to go down to the stable and I'm going to try to stop them. Well, I'm proud to hear that. Matt? Oh, thank heaven you're here. Now, what's the matter, Kitty? Matt, you got to stop those two men from killing each other. Uh, you're as bad as Chester. Here's a letter. You read it. Huh? Yeah, it's for you. Jim Doby came out and gave it to me a few minutes ago when I passed the Dodge house. He didn't have time to bring it over. I think I know what it is. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> I should have guessed it. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yes, yes, oh yeah. never mind, Chester. Come on, let's go. Him, Mr. Dillon, right in the door of the stable there. That's him. Yeah, I see him. Looks like he's just standing there waiting. Well, he picked the best spot he could. Jeff Lightley will have to come at him across the open there. I don't see Lightley around nowhere. He's not far away. You can bet on that. You stay out of this, Marshal. The law can settle up afterwards. Now, watch your gun, Ben. Now, wait a minute. I got no time to argue. Just hand it over. I mean it, Ben. All right. Thanks. Well, it won't do no good. I'll find him later, is all. I doubt it. Quit hiding behind that marshal and come on out, Vulcan. Now what have you done? Set me up for him? Give me my gun. Come on. Get back inside, Ben. You stay with him, Chester. Yes, sir. I'll go. Come on now, Ben. That's why you don't let it alone. I don't recollect giving you no invite to this party, Marshal. I'll take that gun of yours, Lightly. Uh, well, I ain't so sure about that. Now, you're pretty high-handed, ain't you? You're just lucky you didn't try to draw. Chester, bring Ben out here. <laughs> well, all you're doing, Marshal, is just putting it off a while. It'll just happen later is all. Uh, maybe. All right. Both of you. I want you to read this letter. It was handed me a couple of minutes ago. Go ahead. Go ahead, read it. Marshal Dillon, when you get this, I've left on the train for back east. Huh? I'm going with Slim Randall. He's a fine fellow and treats me good. She not go with... like Jeff and Ben. You tell them for me I don't want they should kill each other, but I don't never want to hear of them again. Well, what do you think? Fighting over a woman who doesn't want either one of you. Why, that 
dirty little sneak. You know, come to think of it, I was getting so I didn't trust her at all. Oh, I never did. That's why I wasn't in no hurry to find her. Well, I'll be... Here, now. Bogan, I'm going to buy you a drink. And I'm proud to accept. And the second one's on me. <laughs> hey, Marshal. You know, I, I, I guess you got here just in time to keep us from making a couple of fools of ourselves. No, not quite in time, boys. Well, what do you mean? You both married her, didn't you? And directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The script was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns were by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.